Hello everyone, welcome back to Alisa Lifestyle Vlog. So in today's video, I will be sharing together with my special guest some experiences of former J1 teachers. As we all know, J1 is up to five years. After the five years program, you will be asked to go back to your home country to fulfill the two years home residency. This is not true to all because I was also a J1 teacher before, but I was able to continue my stay here because I got a waiver. But for those teachers who are not eligible to get a waiver, they must go home and fulfill the two years home residency requirement. So in today's video, I hope to inspire a lot of teachers that it is not scary to go back home, that there is opportunity that is waiting for you when you go back to the Philippines. And also, let us remember that the goal and the purpose of the Julian program is for you to share whatever knowledge and experiences that you have learned in the U.S. to your home country. So I am so excited for this video. They are not only my guests, but also my close friends. So yeah, without further delay, let's start. And before that, please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. <laughs> Um, I have here my guests, not just my guests, but my friends as well. And they're going to share to us um, their life after J1, just to inspire other people that um, going home after J1 is not that bad. And it's there's so many things that we can do in the Philippines. So I will allow them to introduce themselves. So let's start with Mark. <laughs> um, hello, everyone. I am Mark. Um, I was a former um, teacher in the United States of America. I was a third grade teacher there. And now I am currently back in the Philippines and currently teaching as a sixth grade teacher in the Department of Education. Hello, everyone. I am Retchen. So I was a former J1 teacher in the United States. Um, I thought um special education i am a res i was a resource teacher rather so um right now i am back in the philippines and currently teaching first grade and full time and then a part time college instructor as well all right thank you so much so before we start with our main topic I just want to know, like, what are the best thing and the most challenging that you experienced while well, you were as a J1 teacher? Just a quick answer about that. Like, you know, give us an idea of your experience, reminiscing your, your experience as a J1 teacher. I want to share. So the most, um, okay, I want to share the most challenging and then the best part of it. So. One of the most challenging part was that um, way back in the Philippines, I was a kindergarten teacher. So I was like, expecting that when I get to the U.S., I will be teaching kindergarten as well. But right there and then, when I arrived in the U.S., I was told that I'll be teaching SPED, which is my bachelor's degree. So that was the toughest challenge that I've encountered because... Um, um, though SPED is my bachelor's degree, um, I am not really confident. But then again, at the end of the day, you have to cross the bridge because, of course, you don't have a choice. Will I go back to the Philippines? What, what will I do? You know, um, uh, so, but then with the support of uh, newfound friends, um, administrators as well. So um, I was able to cope with it. And then 
uh, Miss Alisa was my uh, former colleague. She was one of the most important people who played a big role for me to adjust, you know. And then um, what's the good part was that um, you, uh, your resiliency, your resiliency, you know, um, your resilience to, uh, to the new environment, to adapt, which is very basic for us Filipinos, you know. We are very strong. We have a very strong foundation when it comes to uh, conquering uh, hard hardships. So that's a good thing. And uh, making new friends as well because they will, they are, they will be your um, go-to in ter in when it comes to troubles and so on and so forth. That's it. That's a good sharing. Thank you so much, Rachel. And then how about Mark? Um, I just like to okay. add something on that um, challenge that I've experienced while I was there back in the United States is that the culture, I was really not used to the things that they, they do there. It's very different. So it's common. I think it's a very common, um, you know, reaction or feeling in, in going to a, a foreign country. Um, so the adjustment was not easy because, you know, things are not like this here in the Philippines. So um, that's one of the things that I have experienced and I cannot really, um, you know, forget about those things. Uh, but of course, uh, with the help of uh, the colleagues, especially with um, uh, Miss Elisa, um, She's one of the, the people, just like what uh, Ms. Retchen mentioned, she's one of the people that, you know, have helped us, uh, you know, in conquering things that we don't know and um, also on the hardship that we have experienced there. And also the good thing about, um, the good thing about um, uh, as a teacher in the United States is that um, there are, there's, there's um, what would you call that, get the, the instructional coach, yeah, in you know in the system they have that uh, someone who is a seasoned teacher and can teach you and can guide you on what are the things that you have to do in the classroom so it was really a big help as well and um, and also um things that are um you know great things that i've experienced there we call traveling that's that's one thing that i have um you know that's one of the highlights you know, in my stay uh, there in America, the travel, you know, you get you get to see them in books, you get to see them in television and movies, but having, you know, um, having to experience them in real life, that was really amazing. You know, going to San Francisco, you can still remember our, our travel there. <laughs> and, you know, in California, Las Vegas, so in Colorado, that was a very long ride. So the experience there was really great. As, as a whole, there are a lot of challenges, but you know, if you have to balance things out, um, the, the experience was really, really great. Thank you so much for that. And so back to our topic, um, I just want to know um, upon arrival back to the Philippines, um, was the adjustment easy? Um, and what was the process of becoming a teacher again? Because many teachers always tell me like they are kind of scared to go home after five years after their program because they might not be able to have, have any work. And I just want to know if that is true. And if it's not, um, can you share us your experience in going back to um, being a teacher in the Philippines? So let's start with Mark this time. <coughs> Ah, yeah, it's kind of true and, and uh, not at the same time because, um, you know, uh, there's a program here in the Philippines which um, they called SPIMS. The program is to cater um, any any person who has a license, who has a license to teach here in the Philippines that they can go back without, process, without you know, doing a, a very, um, a very long process um, in getting into uh, to the department. So uh, they just have to... Um, just like what I have, um, what I have, um, what I did is that I just went to a certain, a certain link and and put all of the information there, and then I received an email. Although it's a very long process as well, because it took me like a year, a year to you know to have the the item.
um, I would not recommend uh, teachers that, you know, not having a plan B. It's always good to have a plan B because um, I thought that um, getting into that kind of um, program, I would uh, right away have a job, but it took me a year. So um, it was really challenging for me to stay here without a job without you know you know i i have the i mean i have enough um to go to, um sort of funds but but uh of course because you don't have a job uh nothing is coming in so it's very it's very hard so oh my suggestion is that really um had a have a plan b yes so bali hindi ka na talaga uh, you are not going to do the same um, experience, di ba? Kasi yes, yung nag, same nag tayo before. Mm-hmm. Yes, you need to do that. all of those process na maglilinya ka. Mm-hmm. Um, hindi na yun yes. gagawin mo. That's not what you're gonna do. That's no, great. Not anymore. That's great. Not anymore. That's, that's great. That's like, the, that's like they're, because we are considered, OFWs are considered as, um, you know, heroes. So I think that they're, you know, how they repay OFWs as heroes. Uh, you know, they don't have to go through a very um, hard and long process. And so I like it. It's an advantage. Um, Mark, quick question. They they, mm-hmm. they they ask you to, you know, do the demonstration or more? Oh, yeah. the, no, not anymore. So wow. not anymore. They did not ask anymore a demonstration. So you were aside already to the, to the closest, the closest available item in your See? town. So nice. they, they're going to ask you, they're going to ask you if... Um, um, what town, what uh, what division you wanted to go in, and they're gonna look for available items. They're gonna ask the division if there are available items um, in your division, and what are the schools that um, uh, uh, that are available, because um, we have um, teachers um, coming back. So just like that. In my in my uh, in my experience, I only have since our our um, town is just a small town. Uh, I only have one option. And the good thing about that is it, it it will only take me eight minutes to drive using my bike. Um, I mean, motorcycle using my motorcycle and going from home uh, from home going to the 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 school. So that's a good thing because it was just a very it was just very close to my to my home. That's good. That's nice. Yeah, so yes, that's, um, really nice that's a good follow-up question, Rich, because yeah, sometimes like you don't want to do all of these things again, like <laughs> yes. take the yes, 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 demonstration, yes, interview, yes, yes. so they're making it easy so, for for the teachers to for come back, teachers. right? Yes. Because at the end of the day, you are and, you are here to share you whatever you have learned back to the Philippines and that's advantageous mm-hmm. to the Philippines as well. But, yeah, All right, that's, that's the, good. Yeah, that's the goal of the program. That's the goal of the program for the, the, the J1, right? Um, shared experience, yes. you have experience from the United States. A little reminder also, it's uh, it's not just for teachers. If you have a license, if you're not a teacher from, you know, from a foreign country and, and you have a license, teach in the Philippines, you are welcome. You are very much welcome. Because most of the people that I was most of the people that um, you know, I was with um, during the process, there are six of us in our division. Most of them are not teacher. We're only two of us. We're only teacher. Most of them are. Um, I mean, four of them are um, um, domestic helper, if I can still remember. So it's That's a really good nice. thing. It's really good. It's a really good program. That's interesting. Yeah. And some right. of them are domestic helper. So, um, yeah. So even if you are not teachers, as long as you were teachers before mm, in the Philippines, as long as you, have, you can go back mm, and you are part of the Or you have a program. license to teach. Mm, yes. yes. Mahirap ba ang mag-renew ng license ngayon? Like, um, well, it no, it's not anymore. Part? It's not anymore. It's not anymore um, hard to um, renew license because, uh, because they do it online already. You just have to appear. Um, everything is online already. Um, it's just that it, it's going to be long. It's going to be um, a long process if there's examination. That would be a challenge if there's an examination, schedule examination um, during the time that you will have your appointment. Mm. I mean, you will experience a very long line, but uh, those days or months na, na wala, wala, uh, wala, um, examination, uh, smooth lang ang flow. I, I actually have experience from, because I, I renewed my, my license in Butuan. It only took me like 10 minutes, I think. 10 minutes? Wow. Yes. 
10 minutes to finish my renewal. And then the card was already there. I was really shocked. I was, I was, so it has improved. I, I even asked. I even <laughs> asked. Uh, I, Yes, Absolutely. it has improved. Actually, it has improved. I even asked the teller that, oh, "Is this my card already?" So yes, sir, it's your card already. Oh, this this is really this is really fast. Wow, and I've never experienced this before. <laughs> yeah, I was really, I was really Taas na linya, tapos we will go back after a few months, pa, just to get it, just to get that one yes. card. Yes. Yes. All I right. Think- okay. So Mark's experience is in public school. So if you want to go back as a public school teacher, um, di ba hindi na siya masyadong challenging ngayon? Um, just do the program that our government has um, um, started because it's really good for those who, who wants to go back as a public school teacher. Now, um, for Retchen, Retchen has a different experience, I think. So she's yeah. not connected in with the Department of Education. So she's in the private sector. And that's good to know because not all people want to go back to the Department of Education. So um, now let's hear her experience as well. So for me, it's a different thing from Mark. So um, it's a choice, really. I, um, before I flew to the U.S., I am a former um, public sector employee as well. So when I came back, I um, it was re- really intentional not to go back to the department. It's a personal choice. So for a year, that was planned out already that when I get home, I will um, take a rest. I will take care of my family because I'm, um, um, I'm married, you know, and they did not come with me to the U.S. So I plan or we plan that I will, you know, take a break i deserve that after those stress that i've <laughs> what, <That's> acquired <laughs> so but then as you as life go on, life go life goes on right but then your pocket you have to it should be fill, filled so i decided to i decided to um, venture to businesses and then it was nice. It was a nice trial and error process. You just have to play with it and, again, be resilient wherever you are. Um, U.S. taught me that. And then um, it is a good time also to continue your education. Um, going back home or coming back home is really not a bad thing. You know, you will see your family. You will reconnect reconnect with your friends as well so um one thing as well is that going back to school continue your education because you, we all know already if you're from the u.s uh, you know already um the advantage if you have a master's degree i already have mine but then i chose to it's it's not aligned with special education. So this time around, I chose to enroll another master's degree, which is in line with my bachelor's degree, which is SPED, which, you know, I know will be helpful when I go back, hopefully, if I plan to. So, and then this year, I applied as a first grade teacher in a private school and then upon checking my credentials and so on and so forth they offered me a part-time job as well to be an instructor in the college department which is good um i am getting the experience in teaching little ones because i am a, a, a first grade teacher right now and then I am also, you know, sharing, imparting my knowledge to the future educators in our country. So um, I am really doing the purpose of being a J1 teacher. I am sharing the cultures, all my experiences, and um, some of the strategies that I've used in the U.S. as well. So um, overall, it is not a bad thing, but the f- very first thing, thing that really upset me when I came back was the internet connection. But now I am slowly, <laughs> yeah. you know, adapting. Adapting. But so far so good. There are really challenges along the way, but you have you just have to, you know, keep going. There's nothing wrong with it. So I think that's it. 
I like that. I like that. And though you always you always um, mention about being resilient, and that's really true, right? So, um, kahit dito sa US, it's not easy. Like people think that oh, basa na sa US na everything is like you know yeah. easy and maganda yeah. and okay. okay. Thing. Like stress level is this yeah. high. Um, I always tell them that when you are in the Philippines, yes, you are stressed, but um, your family. Um, the food and everything is just like you know it can compensate but here <clears throat> the stress is here but the food you don't even understand some food here diba so um it's not really like everywhere you go you need to have that kind of attitude like just keep moving mm-hmm. all right thank you so much for that and it's really nice and i think it's just really like a blessing in this guys that i have you both today because you have different experience right <laughs> now you are able to help our viewers to see um, the two sides, like the public school and the, and the private sector. Now, I just um, this is just almost the end of our sharing. I just want to know um, what is your best advice in terms of financial aspect um, when going back to the Philippines, especially for those J1 who just started this year. So they're very excited to start their J1 journey. But at the same time, they're always thinking about that time that they need to go home. So, um, in your own experience, um, in your own, um, in your own opinion, what is your best advice in terms of financial aspect on, on other things as well? Like, how will they? How can they be ready when the time comes that they need to go home back to the Philippines? Always save for the rainy days. You know, um, when I came home, uh. I know I have, I, 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 or my husband saved enough, you know, but then again, um, there's, you have to start, start from scratch. You have to save because those days that you don't have your job, um, you will, of course, you will get it from your savings. And then at the end of the day, um, you will realize that, in inflation in the Philippines right now is really super duper true. Uh, the value of money, the va- value of your 1,000 pesos is just like, you, you can just spend it in a snap of a finger. So save and then just like Mr. Mark said earlier, um, always have a plan B and do not when you arrived in the Philippines, do not spend, 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 spend. You have to think of the next few months and year because you don't know when you will get the job. Even if you will get the job, um, let us be very real- realistic here. The money that you are earning in the U.S. is way, way, way different of the money that you're earning in the Philippines. So, and then if you plan to go back in the U.S., always leave something that you will use for the next how many years that you want to stay in the Philippines. And then, of course, save for your education as well because we know that when you enroll in a master's degree, it will, you know, you have to spend a lot of money so those are very basic, but sometimes those very ba- basic things, we, I am guilty of that mm-hmm. as well. So those are very basic, but sometimes we neglect those ba- basic things sometimes. So I think that's it for me. That's a great share. Thank you so much. How about Mark? Um, I, I, I think she has mentioned already everything. <laughs> so uh, we have the same experience, but I just like to add up... Um, um, if um, during your first year, um, uh, you can do whatever you want. Cause that's what we did. Like enjoy uh, what what United States can offer. But um, on your succeeding years, um, you really have to think about saving. Cause um, you know, just like what she has mentioned, um, you have to you have to uh, you, ha- you need to have money during rainy days. So um, just that, like um, have a plan B and. Um, um, think of uh, the situation that um, you'll be in when you come back home. So that's really true because um, uh, what she has mentioned about, you know, when it comes to the salary, the compensation, what you earn there in the United States is like a million fold 
um, to um, what you have earned here, uh, what you can earn here in the Philippines, and what you have earned here in the Philippines. So maybe um, you can also, you, you will also experience like a shop or, you know, that you can, you, things that you cannot buy anymore because you have to think about, oh, this is the only money that I I'll get um, at the end of the at the end of the month. So I really have to think of uh, how to spend this wisely. So so save. That's a very important thing to do. All right. So, since we're talking about salary, um, yes. I, I just mm -hmm. if you don't want to answer this, it's okay. But can you give us mm -hmm. like an idea, Mark? Um, what is the starting salary in DepEd now? And um, for Redshen, like, what is the like? somehow salary in the private sector like just the estimate you don't need to reveal your own salary okay oh, so just yeah. The, yeah so that they will have an idea oh i will be earning that much uh, uh that's okay because um the salary in the philippines is is, is is actually published um online yes. so you can actually see it online for the teaching uh teacher one position the first position in the department uh, Around, uh, I think it's around twenty-seven thousand a month in pesos in the Philippine money, twenty-seven thousand a month. So that's already quite good. Uh, if you're really staying here in the Philippines, it's already okay. You'll get by. <laughs> yeah, true. Yes, true. I remember mine before it was sixteen thousand. Like when yes, yes. yes, yes. I left the Philippines around like I think uh, when I left the Philippines it was around twenty-one thousand. Yes, mm -hmm. I still remember it's around yes. twenty-one thousand when I Just left. Just like you. Yes, that I think I left same as you, um, twenty one around twenty one when I left the Department of Education. So, in my case, um, how will I say it? So, uh, if I am just teaching first grade, um, it's ten, you know, ten. But then because I with my credentials as well. Um, it's near with the Department of Education, a little higher because of my um, nice. part-time, you know, part-time uh, job in college. So uh, roughly that's it. And then one more thing is that um, do not be afraid to come home. Do not be afraid. All you have to do is pray hard. <laughs> Pray hard and again be resilient. Right? Um, I love what you're saying. Do not be afraid to go. Why are we gonna be afraid? That's our home place. Like that's our hometown. That is where we live mm -hmm. before. And and I just miss the food, the places. Even going mm -hmm. to the mall there is really different experience than here. Can you feel my homesickness? <laughs> I've been here like yeah. seven. This is my seven, <laughs> yes. seven year, but. I am very homesick. Food that you can see in the street, it's really, you know, I miss those kind of things. Um, that's why I made this video because I want to inspire people that going back to the Philippines is what's the main purpose of the program and there's nothing to be afraid, afraid of. Um, it doesn't mean that that's the end of your journey in the U.S. because, again, that's just a two-year home residency. Yes, yes, home now, residency. speaking of that, I want to know, do you have future plans of going back to the Philippines? Are you just finishing your two years home residency or is that a permanent stay? Well, what state are you looking forward to, you know, to teach again? Um, uh, I think uh, I think it's okay to share about that because um, um, you know what? Um, in ex exiting in the department right now, it's very much easier than was than it was before. Really? Um, if you if you yes, if you, if your reason is uh, if your reason is going abroad, they're not gonna they're not gonna um you know uh they're not gonna stop you from doing whatever you want to. Really? Um, so uh. I don't know. Um, I don't know. Um, I'm gonna. I'm gonna just give an estimation. I think around four to five years. My stay will be around four to five years here because I really wanted to finish um, schooling. I'm taking up masters right now, so I want to finish that and hopefully, you know, um, if um, in God's time, I'll be able to finish. I will be able to finish the doctorate degree as well. Hopefully, hopefully, And um, yes about um about um about the state i think i would still uh, i would still um um choose arizona i really love arizona i really love arizona i mean the weather weather wise i really like that so i don't like the cold uh one of my friends will go to i mean i think next year he will go to um 
uh, um, Alaska. So I don't know. I cannot. <laughs> I cannot stay there. <laughs> I cannot stay. That's I told true. him that. Uh, I don't know um, if you're gonna be able to like you know um, stay there for a longer time because um, um, our friends who were in there um, it, it did not um, take them like um, two years to stay them so they really transferred. I mean the compensation. I mean the salary will not compensate the you know the, the experience that she yes. she will have there. It's a very cold place. I mean. If you want to earn, and if you really want to, uh, if you want to, like you know, do the sacrifice, I mean, uh, Alaska it's is for really you, but for me it's not. I mean, yeah, it really depends on the on, on the person. But for yes. me, I love Arizona. <laughs> True. I love the weather. So um, and thank you, Mark, yeah, for putting Arizona. <laughs> out there. Like you need to finish your studies because this is one thing. It's just it's so expensive to study here. Or yeah, even if you will do online, yes, it's still very, very much expensive. expensive because your tuition will not be based on, um, it's not going to be a local based um, amount or something. So it's really nice to finish all these things. And when you come here, you don't need to worry about anything. And your salary here is really higher if you have this education. So thank you for taking note of that. But take your time mm -hmm. to yes, finish everything course. that you need to accomplish and... Um, hindi naman mawawala ang US. The US will always yes. be Filipino teachers because we're the yes. best child. Yes, I'm not wrong. <laughs> okay. Yes. How about friends? Are you willing to share your plans? Um, in different, no concrete plan as of the yes. moment. But sure. then definitely, it it's part of the plan to really go back. I really want to go back. Though I have, you know, the experience, it, my experience when I was there is that not really all, you know, bed of roses. It has a lot of thorns as well. But then in my case, it's part of the plan. No concrete plan yet, no timeline yet. But then I really want to go back because I wanted to you know, greener pasture for my family, which is, I believe, most of us are doing or going to the U.S. to give that to our respective families. So, yeah, I still plan to go back. That's why I'm um, g getting my master's degree in spe special education as well. And then maybe somehow my family could experience the life in the U.S. All so, right. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate you guys. Um, thank you for being my friend. I know it's been a while that we haven't yes. seen each other, but yeah. we will see you. Soon. We will see each other soon. Like let's claim it. All yes. right. So yes. thank you. Yes. And, um, I think it's time for you to rest. And thank you for giving you sharing your time with us, with the viewers. Mm -hmm. And yeah, till the next video. Um, bye everyone. Thank you for watching. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye.